I'm Chef Jasper, and today we are in the kitchen making fresh mozzarella and ricotta cheese. You're gonna love the stories I have behind each recipe, but also it's fairly simple, you're gonna see. So let's start off with a gallon of milk and a nice large six quart pot. On about medium high to high heat, you really have to watch it. So whole milk, of course. I've tried it with skim milk, I've tried it with uh, 2% and other milks, but you really need to use the whole milk. And now we will wait until it reaches about 90 degrees. 90, 95, it's not gonna hurt, you know, either way a few degrees. In the meantime, let's put a little salt in here. Looks like a lot of salt. 95% of the salt is gonna stay in the whey when we separate the curds from the whey. Also, this is a must. This is citric acid, and you can't make cheese without rennet. Now, there's really about three or four types of rennet on the market. You have the natural rennet, which comes from the cow's stomach. Yes, over 3,000 years ago, it was discovered. Believe it or not, milk from the cow's stomach? No, no, that's what everybody thinks. How do they get the rennet? Well, they get the milk, no problem at all. But what they did was they didn't have anywhere to store the milk. And as they walked across the desert, these people, they would use the cow's stomach to store the milk in. You have leather purses today. You have other uh, carrying materials, you know, that you would use. But back then, the cow's stomach was just perfect. It kept it at a good temperature also. Little did these people know that there was rennet inside the cow's stomach that brought everything together. And when the temperature reached 90 degrees, they went to pour out the milk, it would look almost like a yogurt. That was the beginning of all cheese. So rennet in the tablet form like I have here, and this is a great one, it's a vegetarian one. Or you can have the liquid rennet, which of course comes from the cow's stomach, or they even have the rennet from a camel now. How about that? Very, very uh, popular in uh, some countries. Because remember, almost every major country that we know today makes their own cheese. So this is just starting to come up, um, I don't know, maybe to about, I would say about 60 degrees right now. You don't really want to use ice cold milk. So let that sit for a minute. I'm stirring now because we're not going to disturb this in a little while. And then we have our rennet tablet and we just pop the tablet right out of here. And you can mix this in a little bowl beforehand with a little hot water and kind of make a little slurry because you just don't want to add the whole tablet. So at this point, let's give this milk a stir and we'll add some of the citric acid, about a good teaspoon or so. It's not gonna hurt if you add a little more, but remember, if you don't have citric acid, that's okay. Lemon juice or even buttermilk will do the trick also. We'll bring this to a, a nice 90 degrees, put our tablet in a little bowl here, and of course, um, we'll, uh, we'll get some of this water out of here from the milk because it'll start separating when the curds uh, start coming together because you can see it happening right now. We're really about maybe three or four minutes away from this happening, so let's get some of that milk, some of that water there. That's more than enough. And just kind of press it down and it, it'll start dissolving. The rennet is what you need. The citric acid really helps. I don't know, a lot of cheesemakers think that the citric acid is more of a cheat, but the rennet is what you need. Okay. Now, let's take this big wooden spoon out of here because look, it's already happening. This is what I wanted you to see. I get excited when I see it starting to work. So now let's add our, uh, our rennet and kind of just make sure it's all mixed up in there. We don't want to disturb it too much, but just enough to mix it around. And here we go. Let's check our, uh, our temperature. See if we're uh, where we're at right now. Oh wow, we're already at about 85 degrees. This is perfect, it's happening right now, quicker than I thought. And look at this, here it is. This is what I'm talking about. Look at the curds, there you go. And look at the water separation, can you see that? That's what we need right now. We don't want to disturb these. A lot of people make the mistake at this point, they stir it one more time. Don't touch this right now. We could take the water off later when we separate the curds from the whey. 
All right, give it one more test here. Check our temp. And we are just hitting 90 degrees right now. I could tell also by looking at that. Okay, and now we're just gonna let this sit for about two to three hours in the refrigerator. And then we'll come back and we'll make the curds and the whey. And now it's time to separate the curds from the whey. Just look at the butter fat that we have here. Unbelievable. So now you can strain it in a fine mesh strainer or, and you can leave a little in there, you can use some cheesecloth. So let's get these curds. Let's add some salt again. Looks like a lot of salt. 95% of that will stay in the whey when we separate these curds from the whey again. So I can now bring this to a boil and use this whey, or I could just add some boiling water, which when you're making a lot of cheese every day, this is what you usually do. At this point, we're gonna add the water to our curds. Yes, it's hot. And that's the first thing everybody asks me, how do you do it by hand? Well, you don't have to, you're at home. Let's, uh, let's turn this off here and let's start mixing these curds and look at them, start to melt. Remember, milk is about 80% water. So you're gonna take away 80% of the water, you're only gonna have 20% left over. So what does that mean? That means you're gonna get one pound of cheese out of every gallon of milk. That's just science. Continue to work these curds. Everything's starting to calm down now. What does mozzarella mean? Mozza means to tear in Italian. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start stretching and tearing. And then with the leftover curds, you can make ricotta. You'll see that in a few minutes. All right, oh yes, it's hot. And yes, the curds are coming together. Let's just start mixing this. Now, when I separated those curds, I cut them up earlier. And then I put the whey back on top of it. So you're gonna think that, oh wow, I made a mistake. Look at this, what's all this water? That's what you want, because again, 80% water takes a few minutes now and look everything that's coming together and believe me we won't waste anything when it's ready we're looking for this stretch right now we fold over and under and within seconds it starts coming together fiori de latte the flower of the milk the freshest creamiest and silkiest cheese you ever eat I guarantee you all right, look at this beautiful, soft, and silky gloss right here. Oh, yes. Now, in Italy, they use buffalo milk. Well, you know what? I'll put this American milk up against any buffalo milk in Italy because here we're in America, and it's just absolutely perfect to work with. We stretch and we pull fold over and under, dip it back in that water. The temperature now has probably dropped from boiling to about 150 degrees, 160 degrees, and I can work with it. Fold over and under again. And if you wanna show off for your friends, I do this table side at my restaurant. We go up as far as we can. And this is where you get the word mozza right there. You don't want to see through it, but you want to have a nice stretch and hold it from the bottom and go up again. Fold over and under, looking for that nice silky outer surface again. And now to form a mozzarella ball, it's really easier than you think. We can make a loaf, that's okay. That's even easier to loaf but we want to do the mozzarella balls just like in Italy. And here, I'm looking to see if we have any tears or rips. I don't see any. And at this point, I'll push up and I tear. Just like that. Ah, does that look beautiful? Put it back in here just for a second. Kind of form a ball. Now remember, I took those curds and whey out of the refrigerator. 
So that whey that's left over is a little chilled, and that's what we want to put our mozzarella ball in. I'll shape it one more time. We'll put it right in there. We'll do this again. One more time. Fold over an onion. And really, you can make any size that you would like. I mean, sometimes I'll just make a small little mozzarella ball. Just perfect for hors d'oeuvres or appetizers. If we're using it for pizza, of course, we could do the logs. A lot of people uh, go ahead and do a braid. And that's beautiful if you're, uh, if you're serving. I leave that up to my daughter to make the braids for me. One more time here. Just like that. And there we go. Oh, we still have some left here. And I'll be honest with you, once I get to this point, the water is just a perfect temperature. So like I said, no waste. Push it up. And we tear. And just in case you see some little marks on the outside, some little stretch marks right there, just put it back in here and just kind of go over it with that warm water. Form it one more time. Give it that little tear at the bottom. And there you have it, my friends. The freshest mozzarella you'll ever eat. And now we can slice this and make a beautiful, very traditional caprese salad with fresh tomatoes and a little bit of basil, extra virgin olive oil. Oh, so delicious. The leftover whey with a little more milk and some citric acid or buttermilk to make fresh ricotta cheese. What does ricotta mean? Ricotta means to recook in Italian. Remember, cotto means to cook, so ricotta. Some people say ricotta, that's okay. How are we gonna do this now? Hmm, remember the leftover curds and whey? Just look at the butterfat coming to the top. It's butter right on top of that. You don't wanna throw some of that away, let me tell you that. So, we're gonna use a little bit of that, but first we need to begin with some fresh milk. Ah, just perfect. And we're gonna bring this to about 190 degrees. So we don't have to use all of it. Of course, we're gonna need some salt. Not as much when we were making the mozzarella. And then of course, this whey. We wanna kinda of skim it right on top and get that butter fat in there. We'll add that right to it. This just makes it extra good because we already made the mozzarella. All right, we'll add that and we can give this a stir, but the key ingredient to this is either lemon juice or citric acid. You probably have fresh lemon at home. So let's get our lemon, put this right in here. And yes, it's gonna give it a little lemon flavor. If you don't want that lemon flavor, then add some buttermilk at this time. All right. Add the other half of the lemon. Give it a stir. And look what's happening. The curds are starting to form. Now, at this point, we want to wait until it reaches about 185 to 190 degrees. And I'm just checking on it. We're at about 120 degrees right now. Remember, when we make the fresh mozzarella, the curds start to form at 90 degrees, but we want this a little creamier. We want the ricotta. And the ricotta can be used for so many good things. Homemade lasagna, a pan of lasagna with the fresh ricotta cheese, oh so good. Of course, fresh fruit, maybe some strawberries and balsamico, that's always great. Cannelloni, manicotti, ravioli, tortellini, the list is endless with fresh ricotta cheese. Or you just may want to eat it with a spoon. Now, you can really see the curds separating here because I'm stirring them, unlike the mozzarella. And you can see the whey. Just look at this. And again, about 80% water or so to about 20% curds. So you didn't make a mistake at all when you see all this leftover water here. We continue to stir that. We'll check the temperature one more time. And of course, we're at about 125 degrees right now, 130 degrees. It's, uh, it's rising as I'm, uh, as I'm making the cheese. This is perfect. 
I can even raise this a little higher, but we're almost there. And at this point, we're going to actually get some cheesecloth and we'll just cut this very quickly and put it over a bowl. And while that milk and ricotta is coming to a boil, we don't want to bring it to 212. We we'll put our cheesecloth in here. I always do a double cheesecloth. Then I'll show you a little trick that my Nana used to do when making the fresh ricotta cheese. So when I say double, you'll see me just double over on that. That's what we want right there. Okay. I think we're about there. I could tell by making this so many times where I'm at. And yes, we're at 175 degrees right now. We're going to take this off the stove. And we're going to strain it. Now, we could do it two ways. I could just pour it right over, or I'm just going to do this. Uh... It's going to look almost like cottage cheese. That's okay. But believe me, it's not cottage cheese. But these curds are just perfect. I think ricotta is one of the simplest cheeses to prepare. Get as much of these curds as we can out of here. And I told you about Nana's trick. When she used to make fresh ricotta, she wanted a drier ricotta. Because actually there's two types of ricotta you can make. There's a ricotta like this, or there's a ricotta called ricotta salata that you make the fresh cheese with. When I say fresh cheese, I'm talking about a dry cheese. You know, I hate to waste any of this. So, I'm going to put the rest of this right on top. There we go. And, we'll bring our cheese cult up when I say double here. That's what I'm talking about right now. And just look at that. And look at the curds and whey separation. Here we go again with the curds. Look at the whey. Look at the butter fat in there. Is that great? And my Nana would get this just like this here. Kind of strain it as much as she could. I was four or five years old and I remember her doing this over the sink. And then just twist this a few times. Keep going down more and then put this over the sink and she would just tie it onto the sink and let it strain all afternoon long because she liked the drier ricotta. Not the ricotta salata, the real hard one, but she liked it a little drier. Why? Because when you're making lasagna, when you're making a cook dish with the ricotta, you do not want it to be wet. So a lot of times people just strain the ricotta even more before they cook with it. All right, let me put this into a bowl. And we'll just let this sit for about maybe, I don't know, maybe an hour or so, and then we'll refrigerate. And now it's time to do a little cooking with the ricotta cheese. But first, I want to show you what the curds and whey look like. Rather, just the whey. Look at the butter fat come to the top. Oh my gosh. I can almost take this right off of here. Look at this. It's beautiful. Look at the color. That's a good quality milk. I'll tell you that right now. Okay, let's make some fresh ricotta cream and strawberries. We're gonna drizzle a little balsamic over it. So easy and delicious, perfect for the spring and summertime. Let's get our ricotta cheese and we're gonna add this to a mixing bowl. Just look at the ricotta that we prepared. I wanna show you something. That's pretty solid. How about it? Fresh ricotta. Let's add our uh, cream cheese. Of course, a little bit of vanilla and some powdered sugar. It's that simple. And we're just going to blend this together. That cream cheese is really going to bring everything together. And of course, 
with a little bit of vanilla, the flavor is going to be fantastic. It is that simple. And now let's build a ricotta cream parfait with some delicious fresh strawberries. Put those right in there. Of course, put our ricotta cream right on top. We're gonna put some balsamic reduction on this. Now you can make your own balsamic reduction, which is sugar and balsamic vinegar. But let that kind of get down on those strawberries. And we'll top it off with some fresh basil. Personally, I don't think you're gonna better dessert. Strawberries with ricotta cream. Fresh ricotta, fresh mozzarella, made at home. So easy and delicious and so versatile for so many dishes in your kitchen. Brought to you by Hen House Markets.